in today's lecture we are going to study about degrees of freedom law of equipartition of energy mean free path and its expression it is my next lecture of the unit of kinetic theory of gases so let's start let us first take the recap of what we have studied till now in kinetic theory of gases we have studied what is an ideal gas what are real gases what are the characteristics of ideal gas what is kinetic model of gases and the assumptions of kinetic theory of gases on that basis we have also seen what is meant by velocity of distribution and how it was given by maxwell maxwell's law of uh, distribution of velocities maxwell boltzmann equation and experimental verification of maxwell's equation in the assumptions of kinetic theory of gases we have seen that a gas consists of large number of identical molecules which are like elastic spheres and these molecules they are in constant motion they collide with each other and with the walls of the container this produces pressure exerted by gas so how much freedom do the molecules have let us study this that is degrees of freedom so how do we define this degree of freedom now the degree of freedom it is defined as the total number of independent variables these are the total number of independent variables which are required to completely describe the state of motion so these are required to completely describe the state of motion of a body and these are called as the degrees of freedom if you take an example of an ant which is moving along a straight line so as it is shown in this figure the ant is moving along straight line to describe its motion we just need one coordinate that is x coordinate if it is moving along the x axis so this will be called as one degree of freedom if suppose the ant is moving in a plane if it is moving in a plane like this and its position is here then we need two coordinates x and y to describe its motion so we say that it has two degrees of freedom and if suppose a ant or a fly if it is moving in space then to describe its motion we will need three variables x y and z so therefore we say that it has three degrees of freedom so rigid body however not only moves but it also rotates about any axis passing through itself hence it has three degrees of freedom due to rotational motion also thus it will have all six degrees of freedom so let us see here now suppose this is a rigid body then it can move along three axis these are the three degrees of translational freedom if it is allowed to move uh, along its axis if it rotates then it will have the rotational degree of freedom also if we have a combination of two bodies as it is shown here then these two bodies in a combined way can have three degrees of translational motion along x y z axis as we have seen above and it can also rotate about an axis which is passing through its center of mass or uh, then this will be having two degrees of rotational motion so in this way we have seen what is the degree of freedom how many degrees of freedom are there let us take example of mono atomic gases now now in case of mono atomic gases as you know that it has one atom per molecule we can take the examples like helium neon xenon krypton etc so this is suppose a one atom then this atom can have three degrees of translational motion and hence uh, this mono atomic gas it will have three degrees of freedom now for each degree of freedom the energy associated is half kt therefore the total energy of the molecule can be taken as equal to 3 by 2 kt therefore uh, in case of ideal gas if we have three components along the x y and z axis we can write the total energy kinetic energy as equal to half m into vx square plus vy square plus vz square if you take a case of diatomic gas it has two atoms per molecule and suppose these are the two atoms which are shown here then these two combined atoms which is forming a molecule can have three degrees of translational freedom and it will have two degrees of rotational freedom 
So, if suppose this is the axis along which it can rotate, then there can be clockwise rotation or it can have anti-clockwise rotation. So, therefore, we have two rotational degrees of freedom. So, in all we can say that it has five degrees of freedom, three are the translational degrees of freedom and two are the uh, rotational degrees of freedom and the energy associated with each degree of freedom is half kt and the total energy associated is phi by 2. The examples of a diatomic gas is HCl, carbon monoxide, chlorine gas, oxygen gas, hydrogen gas and so on. If suppose this gas is at high temperature, then two more degrees of freedom are added which uh, that is because of vibrational motion. So, therefore, this gas will then have 5 plus 2 that is 7 degrees of freedom in all. If you take the case of a triatomic gas, in case of triatomic gas you know that there are 3 atoms per uh, molecule. Now, these 3 atoms can be arranged in this way, this is called as the nonlinear arrangement and they can be arranged in this way where the 3 atoms are in one line, this is called as the linear arrangement. Now, if it is a linear arrangement, the number of degrees of freedom are different. If it is a non-linear arrangement, the number of degrees of freedom are different. In case of non-linear arrangement, they can have three translational degrees of freedom and three rotational degrees of freedom and therefore, the total number of degrees of freedom will be 6 that is in the case of non-linear gas. If it is a linear gas, then it has three uh, degrees of translational freedom and two degrees of rotational freedom and therefore, it will be having five degrees of freedom. So, for linear arrangement, we have the example of this carbon dioxide and for non-linear arrangement, we have the example of sulfur dioxide and the same is also applicable as we have seen at high temperatures for this, the total number of degrees of freedom will be seven. So, this is about the degrees of freedom and what are the values of degrees of freedom for monoatomic gases, diatomic gases and triatomic gases. The law of equipartition of energy. Now, what is mean by the law of equipartition of energy? Equipartition indicates equal distribution of energy. So, if you have a gas system and uh, this is a dynamic system where all the molecules or all the particles of the gas, they are constantly moving with different velocities then in that case it is found that the energy is equally distributed among all the degrees of freedom and this system is at thermal equilibrium. So, we can state it in this way that the total kinetic energy of a dynamic system which consists of large number of particles in thermal equilibrium, <coughs> it is equally divided among all its degrees of freedom and the energy associated with each degree of freedom is half kT where you all know that K is Boltzmann constant and T is the absolute temperature. Now, how to explain this? To explain this, we will consider the pressure exerted by gas. You all know what is the expression for the pressure exerted by gas and uh, what is uh, how it is written in terms of kinetic energy. And in case of kinetic energy, we have seen that uh, this half m into c square gives us the kinetic energy of gas molecules and this is equal to 3 by 2 kT, where k is the Boltzmann constant and t is the absolute temperature. So, for uh, a kinetic, the according to this kinetic theory of gases, we have written this expression earlier that the mean kinetic energy of gas molecule is written as half mg square equal to 3 by 2 kT, where you know that c is the RMS velocity and c square is the mean square velocity. So, c square can be written as equal to u square plus v square plus w square. So, we can write this. Now, x, y and z are equivalent, uh, this values, the values, uh, value of velocity is equivalent in all the directions. So, we can write this u square as equal to v square equal to w square and therefore, you can say that we write this expression of c square which was written as equal to u square plus v square plus w square. From this expression, this can be written as 3 u square and therefore, this u square will be equal to 1 by 3 c square. So, we have written this as c square u square equal to v square equal to w square is equal to 1 by 3 c square. Also, in this case, if you multiply it with half m, you will get this as 1 by 2 m u square equal to 1 by 2 m v square equal to 1 by 2 m w square. 
and therefore the expression now becomes half m c square will be equal to 3 times of half m u square plus half m the v square and that is equal to 3 times of half m w square. If you equate each of these expression with this value, what do you get? If you equate the first term, you will get 3 and 3 cancelled and half m u square is equal to half k t. So, we get the expression. If you equate the second term, uh, we get half m b square as equal to half k t and if you equate the third term, you get half m w square equal to half k t. So, what does it imply? It implies that this is nothing but the kinetic energy associated with uh, degree of freedom along x axis, this will be for y axis and this will be for z axis. So, therefore, we say that we find that on the right hand side we have the value half k t and the energy associated with each degree of freedom is half k t. So, thus we uh, say that the average kinetic energy associated with each degree of freedom is half k t. And this represents the theorem of equipartition of energy. Again, we can state it in this way. For any dynamical system in thermal equilibrium, the total energy is divided equally among all degrees of freedom and the energy associated per molecule per degree of freedom is half kt. So, this was the law of equipartition of energy. Next, we are going to see what is meant by mean free path and what is the expression for mean free path. At any given temperature, the molecules they suffer continuous collisions with each other and between any two collisions the molecule travels freely a certain distance in a straight line. As you can show here, suppose uh, here this is the first molecule and it will go and collide with this molecule. So, this is the uh, straight line path which it is covering, but after collision with this molecule its path will change. So, it may go in this direction. And in this way, there will be continuous change in the path of the molecule and the path is not straight line, it is a zigzag path. So, this distance which it travels between any two collision, it is called as the free path. Thus, the path covered by a gas molecule between any two collisions, consecutive collisions in a straight line is called as the free path. So, what is free path? It is nothing but the path covered by a gas molecule between any two consecutive collisions. The direction of molecule is changed now after every collision. So, therefore, after number of collisions, this path will appear as zigzag path and this free path is not constant and hence we consider a term which is called as the mean free path and it is used and this is defined as the average distance. What is it? It is the average distance and traveled by a gas molecule between two successive collisions. So, we define it as the average distance traveled by the molecule between two successive collisions. This is called as the mean free path and it is denoted by the letter lambda. If the total distance traveled after n collisions, if uh, the total distance traveled after n collisions is s, then we write the mean free path lambda as equal to s upon n, where s will be equal to sum of all these values. We will take s1 here, s2, s3 and so on up to sn. So, therefore, s will be equal to s1 plus s2 s plus s3 so on up to sn and lambda will be equal to s upon n. On this basis, we also define another term which is called as the mean free time. This mean free time, it is the average time taken by a gas molecule between two successive collisions and this is given by tau is equal to lambda upon c, where c is the average velocity of the gas molecule. Now, we will see what is mean by the sphere of influence. So, this sphere of influence is taken, the idea is taken from ideal gas only. Now, in case of kinetic theory of ideal gas, we assume that all the gas molecules, they are identical and perfectly elastic spheres and these gas molecules, they are randomly motion, uh, moving in all possible directions. And when they move, uh, we have seen that they collide with each other 
and uh, therefore in this case for the sake of simpl uh, simplicity what we are considering that only one molecule which is under consideration is moving and all other mo uh, molecules they are constant or at rest. So uh, suppose we take this molecule as A and if suppose its diameter is sigma then what we will do we will take this gas uh, this molecule sorry as the center and we draw a sphere of radius sigma. So with this radius sigma this will be sigma by 2 this much is sigma by 2. So we will take sigma up to this point we'll, with this radius sigma we will draw a sphere. And all the molecules which will whose centers lie in this sphere will collide with the molecule A. So this sphere is called as the sphere of influence. So on this basis we are going to derive the expression for mean free path. So here I have shown this in this way that this is the central molecule A which is under consideration it is moving and all other molecules they are at rest and uh, this, this much of distance is sigma. So we get a cylindrical uh, structure of this type and all the molecules which come under this cylind imaginary cylinder we can say will also collide with this molecule A. Now to uh, derive this expression we have the assumption that only the molecule which is under consideration is in motion and all other molecules they are at rest and the sphere of influence of the molecule has diameter 2 sigma it means that the molecule can collide with only those molecules the centers of which lie at the at this distance or less than this distance so this is how we have drawn this here this much is uh, this is sigma and this is sigma and uh, we have considered the cylindrical structure this is the cross section here collision cross section now suppose these molecules as we have considered that these molecules they are all identical perfectly elastic spheres and each molecule has diameter sigma and uh, the sphere of influence of molecule has radius sigma that is equal to the diameter of the molecule. So let us take C uh, n as the number of molecules per unit volume and uh, this is the assumption which we have seen here sigma is the molecule of uh, diameter of each molecule. So we will take C as the average velocity of the molecule A and n as the number of molecules per unit volume. Now in one second how many molecules uh, will collide with this molecule A? So A will collide with all the molecules we are going to find out uh, how, with how many molecules A is going to collide because we are considering A in motion and the others are at rest. So A will collide with all the molecules whose centers lie within a cylinder of radius sigma and length c. So we know that uh, we are taking for 1 second. So for 1 second length of the cylinder will be equal to the velocity hence we, take, uh, we are taking this as c and sigma is the radius. So to find out number of molecules in this cylinder we will make use of the formula volume of the cylinder pi r square l and multiplied by n that is number of molecules per unit volume. Suppose we have this cylinder whose length is c and the radius is sigma. So therefore the number of molecules in this cylinder is given by pi into r square will be sigma square l is equal to c and n is the number of molecules per unit volume. And then we can find what is the number of collisions made by the molecule A in one second. So, in second, mein wo jitne bhi molecules in cylinder mein hai, un sabhi se collide ho sak kar sakta hai. So, therefore, the number of collisions will also be equal to pi sigma square into Cn. So, what will be the time taken by the molecule for one collision? To find the time taken by the uh, molecule for one collision, we will take the reciprocal of this. And so, one collision takes place in one upon pi sigma square cn seconds. 
Now, uh, what will be the time interval between two collisions? So, whatever is the time taken for one, uh, one collision will be the time interval between two successive collisions. So, between two successive collisions, the time interval is given by 1 upon pi sigma square Cn. And on this basis, we will find out the distance travelled between two successive collisions. So, the distance travelled between two successive collisions is given by the formula speed into time because we know that distance, uh, the formula for speed is distance upon time. And hence, we write this instead of uh, speed, we will write it C and then for time, we will take the time interval that is C into 1 upon pi sigma square n where C and C gets cancelled and hence we get this equation as 1 upon pi sigma square n. So, therefore, the mean free path will be lambda and that is equal to 1 upon pi sigma square n. This is called as the Clausius expression for the mean free path. So, in this way, we uh, find out the expression for mean free path. So, let us see what we have done. We have taken C as the average velocity of the molecule A and N is the number of molecules uh, per unit volume. So, we first found out in one second uh, that uh, A will collide with all the molecules whose centers lie within a cylinder whose radius is sigma and length is C. So, the next thing what we did is uh, found out what is the number of molecules inside this cylinder. Number of molecules inside the cylinder will be equal to the volume of the cylinder multiplied by n and the formula for volume of cylinder is pi r square l. So, we are taking this as pi sigma square into c multiplied by n and therefore, uh, this a molecule will be able to collide with all these molecules in one second and that is equal to pi sigma square c n. So, what will be the time taken for one collision? It is equal to 1 upon pi sigma square C n and the time interval between two successive collisions will be 1 upon pi sigma square C n seconds. And then with the help of uh, the formula speed into time, we have found out what is the distance travelled and that is C into 1 upon pi sigma square C n. So, therefore, uh, we get the mean free path lambda is equal to 1 upon pi sigma square n and this is called as a Clausius expression for mean free path. Now, remember that uh, while uh, deri deri uh, deriving this equation, we have considered that only the molecule A is in motion and all other molecules they are at rest. But we know that in case of gas, all the molecules they are in constant motion. So, therefore, uh, there was a correction given by Maxwell based on the Maxwell's law of distribution of velocities. So, Maxwell gave us a correction which is called as a Maxwell formula for mean free path and he took into consideration the Maxwell's law of distribution of velocities uh, applied this and gave us a new formula which is uh, the correction and only root 2 term here it is included. So, uh, the formula then now becomes lambda is equal to 1 upon root 2 pi sigma square n. So, this is called as the Maxwell's formula for the mean free path. On the basis of this formula, we can determine the molecular diameter if we know what is lambda and if we know what is n. So, if lambda and n are known, then the molecular diameter sigma can be calculated where we know that uh, the collision frequency f will be equal to c upon lambda because uh, in the earlier slide we have defined what is the mean free time tau is equal to lambda upon c. So, uh, therefore, uh, we can also find the collision frequency where c is the average speed or average velocity of the gas molecule. So, in this way we can de derive the formula for uh, the mean free path in terms of uh, Maxwell Boltzmann law of distribution of velocities also. Now, we will see uh, what is uh, the what are the factors on which this mean free path depends uh, or we can say how does it depend on temperature and pressure. To find the dependence of temperature uh, on pressure, we will consider the pressure exerted by gas. You all know that the pressure exerted by gas, it is given by 1 by 3 rho c square. So, therefore, we can say that according to kinetic theory of gases, the pressure exerted by gas is given by 1 by 3 rho c square, where you know that c is the RMS velocity and c square is called as the mean square velocity. The mean square velocity was also given by the formula 3 kT by m. So, we have written earlier this as c RMS as equal to under root of 3 kT by m. If you substitute the value of this c square in the above equation, this equation becomes p is equal to 1 by 3 rho into 3 kT by m where this rho 3 and 3 gets cancelled 
and we will get the expression as rho k t divided by m. If you rearrange this in terms of m by rho will be equal to uh, this will be k t upon p. We have taken m and rho on the left hand side and p on the right hand side. So, we got m by rho is equal to k t upon p. Now, you can show that this m by rho is equal to 1 by n and this is equal to k t upon p. So, we know that uh, rho is the density, then this density is mass by volume and uh, mass by volume can be written as equal to m into capital N divided by V and this m and m gets cancelled and we get a number of uh, molecules per unit volume. So, therefore, this comes out to be equal to k t upon p. Now, if you substitute this uh, in the formula for lambda that is the mean free path. So, what do we get? Lambda is equal to k t upon root 2 uh, sigma square. Uh, the earlier formula was uh, we have written this lambda is equal to 1 upon root 2 pi sigma square into n. So, we can write this as equal to and uh, there we have substituted 1 by n is equal to k t upon p. So, therefore, we can say that as k is constant, sigma is constant, pi is constant, root is also constant, we can write this lambda is directly proportional to t and lambda is inversely proportional to p. So, we get the expression as lambda directly proportional to t that is absolute temperature, mean free path is inversely proportional to p that is uh, the pressure. So, it means that if suppose you increase the temperature, then lambda will also increase and if you uh, decrease the temperature, lambda will also decrease. But in case of pressure, if you increase the pressure, lambda will decrease and if you uh, decrease the pressure, lambda will increase. So, that is inversely proportional. So, we can say that uh, the mean free path is directly proportional to the absolute temperature of gas and inversely proportional to the pressure of the gas. So, in this way, uh, we can find the expression for mean free path and uh, show in what way the mean free path is depend, uh, depending on the temperature and the pressure. So, that is all for today. In the next lecture, we will study about the transport properties.